All right, y'all, the NCAA tournament is almost here. And uh, we have some selections to talk about. So on this upcoming Sunday, on March the 17th, we will have Selection Sunday, where we will find out where, um, what 68 teams are making it to the NCAA tournament. And we'll also find out where exactly they're ranked. Now, if you don't know, we have 32 conferences in the NCAA. And that means that the conference championships um, have an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. So there are 32 teams who are guaranteed a spot in the NCAA tournament. The rest of the uh, tournament tournament teams, the other 36 teams, they are actually uh, determined by a committee that looks at the different teams and decides uh, who should actually make the final 68 team roster. Now, uh, one other thing to note is that not only are they determining those 36 teams who make it in, but they're also deciding where exactly all 68 teams pair, um, putting them in the different regionals, whether they're in regional one or two, uh, for, for the different regionals and also determining the different matchups that we have. So, uh, without further ado, there is a guy at ESPN named Charlie Cream who is the go-to guy for bracketology related to women's basketball. And he released a um, a updated bracketology report with his thoughts about who is going to make the NCAA tournament and where exactly they will fit. So I do want to just go through that real quick and we can have a little bit of, this, of a discussion about where teams are landing and uh, what this all means. So we start off with um, the bracket watch, which, you know, it says the top overall seed is South Carolina, which makes a lot of sense. First team out is going to be Green Bay. Um, the first team uh, out of uh, the tournament. Uh, the last team that makes that will make it in the tournament is going to be Mississippi State. Now, here are the on the bubble teams. Uh, again, we see the, um, the last four buys are going to be Michigan, Miami, Auburn, Marquette. Last four in, which is like a critical critical piece right here, is uh, Texas A&M, Vandy, Arizona, and Mississippi State. Um, again, first four out is going to be Green Bay, Penn State, Washington State, and Columbia. And the next four out is going to be Cal, Villanova, Washington, and St. Joseph's. All right, so let's look at the brackets and the way at least Charlie Cream thinks stuff will shake out right now, at least. All right, so when the NCAA tournament starts, we actually have eight teams um, that will compete against each other. And those teams will, that's sort of like the first round of sorts. And those teams, the team's winners will then be added um, to uh, the rest of the bracket. So that's something to know. We have Presbyterian, UT Martin, Sacred Heart, Holy Cross, Texas A&M, Vanderbilt, Arizona, and Mississippi State. Now let's take a look at Albany 1. Now this Albany 1 um, division is, is going to be very tough. For, for any of these teams, uh, we have South Carolina, who is the, the number one overall seed. They're going to face uh, off against the 16th uh, seed. And that's either going to be Presbyterian or UT Martin. Whoever wins that actual matchup, then we'll have uh, Kansas or Kansas versus Michigan State. And those games will be at South Carolina in Columbia. Now for Blacksburg, we have... Um, and Blacksburg is, is Virginia Tech, if, if you don't know. Uh, we have um, Utah versus Richmond, Virginia Tech versus Fairfield. And for uh, in Corvallis, we have Auburn versus Louisville. And we have Oregon State versus California Baptist. And in the Columbus, uh, the Columbus location, we have North Carolina versus Middle, Middle Tennessee. And we have Ohio State versus Maine. All right, and again, that is your Albany 1 division seating, the way things are shaking out, according to Charlie Cream. Now, uh, we look at the Portland 4 um, regional. We have USC, who is the number one seed. Um, and, of course, because of that, they're going to be at home. Uh, we have USC versus Hawaii. And in Nebraska versus UNLV. In the Spokane Regional, we have uh, Kansas State versus Drake. And Gonzaga versus Cleveland State. 
in the Raleigh area, we have Baylor versus Marquette and NC State versus Chattanooga. And in the Austin area, we have Tennessee versus Michigan and Texas versus Norfolk State. In the Albany 2 regional, we have Iowa, who is the number one, who will be the number one seed in the Albany 2 regional. Uh, of course, that means that they are playing at home. We have Iowa versus either Sacred Cross or Holy Cross. And we have Florida State versus Alabama. In the Boulder area, we have Oklahoma versus South Dakota State and Colorado versus Eastern Washington. At UConn in stores, we have Duke versus either Texas A&M or Vanderbilt and UConn versus Stony Brook. And in the Los Angeles area for UCLA, of course, we have Ole Miss versus Miami and UCLA at Temple. In the Portland Three regional, we have Stanford, who is the number one, number one uh, seed in that in that regional, and uh, they're going to be playing against Lamar. And Iowa State will face Princeton. In the Bloomington area, we have Syracuse versus Florida Gulf Coast, and Indiana versus Toledo. In South Bend, we have West Virginia taking on Arizona or Mississippi State depending on who wins that matchup. We have Notre Dame versus Marshall. In the Baton Rouge area, we have Creighton versus Maryland. And of course, LSU versus Jackson State. Now, everyone, that is the way things kind of shake out. One thing to note is if you saw if you saw the, uh, the abbreviations AQ next to teams' names, and there were qu- there's quite a few of teams that already have AQ next to their names, that means that they are automatically qualified for the NCAA tournament. That means they won their conference tournament. All right. Again, we have 68 teams. So, uh, so only 32 teams would, would have won their conference tournament. And, um, the other 36 is determined by the committee. All right. So the ones with AQ, that means they automatically qualify. So they have to be in the, in, in the NCAA tournament. Now, a thing to note is if you're curious about how the conference breakdowns work, well, the ACC, and the SEC lead the way. So the ACC has nine teams in the NCAA tournament, according to Charlie Kareem, of course. And the SEC has nine teams as well. The Big Ten has seven. The Big 12 has seven. The Pac-12 has seven. And the Big East has three. Now, everybody, that is, that's kind of the news, guys. Uh, again, this is, um, this is your updated bracketology report as told by Charlie Cream, ESPN's bracketology expert. Now, I I don't have any real opinions about it, um, about the, the the way stuff is laid out, mainly because I I am not a bracketology person. Like I I don't hopefully I get there. Um so in in, in uh, years coming up in the future, I hope to to have my own, to make my own brackets. Um, before it's released and just sort of like give my opinions about where teams are going to fare and like the matchups and all that good stuff. Uh, In the future, I hope to do that. But right now, um, I am not at that knowledge level to actually do so. So uh, that's why I am heavily relying on Charlie Cream and his expert knowledge um, to, uh, to talk about this updated Bracketology Report. And again, this was updated um, this morning as of 1.05 a.m. So this is the most up-to-date um, bracketology info that we can find. Now, a couple things to note about this is that, um, if you noticed the different, uh, locations around, around, um, around, uh, the, the, the first four rounds. So for example, you see an Albany one, you see it's in Columbia, um, in, uh, you know, for the, for the second, second group, group of matchups, it's in Blacksburg, which is Virginia Tech. Um, then you see, uh, Corvallis, which is Oregon state. Then you see, um, Columbus, which is Ohio state. Now, uh, the top two seeds or the top, the top four seeds, I should say in each, um, in each, uh, regional. So, so Albany one and Albany two, uh, each one, like Albany one has four teams. The four top teams are actually able to have, um, their, their first two games at home, which is why it is so important to be in that top 16, uh, because that does mean you get 
at least a guaranteed two games at your home, um, and it's a great advantage. So, so that's why teams are really, really battling to try to get in that top 16 because it is extremely important. Of course, you can get somebody on their home court, but you know, having that home court advantage of having two games at home, it one, economically, it's great. Um, and two, it just uh, provides an extra boost for your team. Now, when we look at the, uh, the, the way everything all, all kind of shakes out, um, of course, if you're in Albany 1, you're kind of screwed because South Carolina is just going to run through that. Um, in my opinion, but of course, anybody can get, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, in the Portland Regional, um, USC does have some competition. I am very, go I'm going to be very much interested to see uh, possibly a USC go against uh, K-State or, um, or, or you look at a team like, like a NC State who, you know, hasn't been that great lately, but can absolutely get a team. Um, I'm very much interested interested to see that. Also, I'm interested to, to see uh, Texas and see how far they actually make it in uh, in Portland number four. And then the Albany Regional. I mean, Iowa's top dogs in here. However, there are some there is some competition, um, right? I want to see Iowa versus Colorado. Um, I, I also want to see Iowa versus UConn if UConn actually makes it. Uh, uh, through stores. And the reason why I say that is because with Aaliyah Edwards injured, is she coming back? We will see. Um, that, that, I think that's that's going to be a critical piece. Also, y'all better watch out for Ole Miss. So in the in the, um, in, in the the bracket right here, we see Ole Miss versus Miami. Ole Miss should beat them. I am interested to see Ole Miss versus UCLA, which is likely going to be a matchup. Ole Miss is a team that can they can get somebody. We've seen them get teams in the past in the, in the NCAA tournament, and I am very much inter interested to see what Coach Yo can get her team to do and what, what uh, types of spoilers they can play in the tournament. Because if, if they can get UCLA, whoo-wee, that's, that's saying something right there. That is saying something. In the Portland 3 area, um, I, you know, Stanford's the top dogs, of course, but Stanford versus Iowa State – Iowa State has a, a whole host of freshmen who are doing their thing. Um, you know, that, that should be a fun team to watch. Also, I see Notre Dame being some really, really good competition against Stanford. Uh, Notre Dame is peaking right now. Uh, they have won several games uh, straight, and they're looking good. Um, also, a thing to note is that LSU is in this regional. So we have Stanford, Notre Dame, LSU. And it's going to be fun to see who makes it out of this. I think who makes it out is likely going to be LSU. I think LSU is going to make it out of this. Uh, if if last year Poa is back and she's 100%. If she's not, they still can make it out, but it'll be a little bit of a struggle bus. Um, so I, I think that that's, that's what I would say. I, I think LSU is going to make it out of this, but it's going to be a battle with Stanford and Notre Dame in this regional. Um, so, so Portland three, I'm saying LSU. Um, for Albany two, I'm saying Iowa likely. Though you know they will have some stiff, stiff, comp stiff competition, especially against UCLA. I think that's going to be huge, <laughs> absolutely huge. Um, but but I do see Iowa just squeezing through but 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 that Iowa versus UCLA game is going to be tough um in the Portland four regional I actually see um actually see Texas actually making it through um USC is phenomenal uh but I don't know I just I just feel like Texas is gonna is gonna squeeze through and win win that win that regional and then of course in the Albany one, of course, it's South Carolina that's going to make it through. So those are my thoughts. Um, South Carolina, Texas, uh, Iowa, and LSU. Those are the teams that I think is going to make it to the Final Four. My opinions may change by the time we hit to hit Selection Sunday, but those are my thoughts right now. Um, hopefully, um, you all got some information about the teams that, that might be in the in the NCAA tournament. Let me know what you all think about it in the comments below. Do you have a Final Four list of teams right now? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below because I do want to I do want to compare notes. Where who do you got? 
um, make it into the final four? Who um, is, do you think South Carolina's getting got before the final four? Do you think LSU's getting got? What about, what about Iowa? What about, what about Texas? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I, I don't see um, really, you know, I do see a lot of spoilers um, and I do see teams getting got and losing when they shouldn't lose. Um, but I, I do think that we will see, you know, the top, top teams in the final four. But, you know, I like chaos. I like upsets. So, hey, if we can get some upsets, I will be very much happy to see it. All right, guys, that is the video. I do appreciate y'all for watching. Uh, hit that thumbs up button if you liked it. Also, subscribe to the channel if you um, have not subscribed yet. We are on our road to 10,000 subscribers, and the goal is to get there before next Monday because that is um, basically when it, when it's when it's we're all ready to go to, to get ready for the NCAA tournament. So if you can hit that like button, that, that would be fantastic. And that subscribe button. Um, I will be back with more videos coming up very soon. Uh, just keeping you all up to date on what's happening with the conference uh, tournaments and also just generally letting you, know, you all know what's happening in the world of women's college basketball. Until next time, guys. Bye, y'all.